Good morning to all and uh, thank you for coming. Uh, on my right, my name is Ari Raif. I uh, happen to be involved with Step by Step uh, without uh, egos, titles and nonsense. We are here uh, to move on an issue which is bipartisan and uh, extremely important. We are here to support Nancy and Lou, to my very far right, Lou. Khaled is from Jenin West Bank, occupied territories of Palestine. And next to me is Bess, which is the best thing that ever happened to me, because she happens to be not only an executive and a respected executive, she is with the Marriott, Hotels of Canada. She's a GM and she has been very, very instrumental when it comes to assist Lou and Nancy in the most difficult times of their life. I want to thank the founder and the man that created Step by Step, George Marcello, who is in front of me and he will be soon introducing you to the foundation called Step by Step. Before I say anything, I just want to make sure that uh, we all understand that since there is not a very large number of media present, I have to tell you that uh, Mark Twain said once that if you don't read newspapers, you are ignorant. If you read newspapers, you are misinformed. So I want to make sure that nobody is misinformed and that Everybody understands that we are on the same page. This is an issue that the media neglected to focus on. We have some support from the Toronto Star, and I will name them so that it will be clear. The media is much more interested in some um, violence, uh, rapes, and other uh, items that sell newspapers rather than dealing with a severe humanitarian issue of organ donations. Around this table are two people that have no borders when it comes to organ donations. Lou, a Canadian, and his wife Nancy, who needs immediately organs to be transferred so we can save her life. This is not an issue of breaking in into a house gets a full blown out of proportion, you know, mentioning in the media while issues of human nature have been swept under the rug. This has to stop. To your right, to my right, Khaled from Jenin, West Bank, is a phenomenal story of the human spirit in action. When it his brother was killed by mistake. The organs of a Palestinian boys were donated to Jewish recipients. And four Israeli kids, including one ultra-Orthodox Jewish kid, actually live today thanks to your brother, your late brother. You coming to Canada is a matter of organs without borders, because this issue is too delicate to leave it to, with all the respect due to politicians and to the media. If they don't want to treat it seriously, they have an issue with me. If they want to help, they have to stand and decorate not some hoodlums that do not deserve any recognition in society. They have to decorate a transplant recipient like George Marcello like someone who for 15 years devotes his life to make sure that things happen. They have to write about you and about you, Lou, because this is a daily struggle. This is not a small potato issue that can be uh, shuffled to the last page of the newspaper, if they write at all. And I'm critical because I think the humanitarian aspect in this society has been uh, removed. People are busy with nonsense. 
Most of the day they spend on, uh, they waste their time. The young generation doesn't get the information. All they do is they play with their uh, smartphones. They are not educated on humanitarian values. There is no education on the basics. And the politicians in this house better listen carefully. People are much more important in building relations than governments, agencies, uh, spokes uh, agencies. They are only distracting and diverting the issues. So we better be honest, straight, and say, and put on the table the issues as they are. With that, I finished, and I hope uh, I said what I really mean, and I mean what I say. Thank you very much. George Marcello, please, the introduction of video step by step. Palestinian boy dies in Rambam Hospital, and his parents decide to donate his organs. Six Israelis will receive the heart, kidneys, lungs, and liver of little Ahmed. Thank you very much, and uh, I think that uh, we'll start, with your permission, Madam Chairman, we'll start with Lou to introduce the case, which is the reason we are here, which is the reason we believe we should be here. By the way, I have to mention that the sponsorship of Step by Step is not only by Canadian organization, Canadian politician, it, 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 it's far more than this, there are organizations and foundations in Canada that believe that we have and we have to support Nancy now. So you have all our support. Please. Well, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Lou Savlagio. I'm from Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank uh, a few people here this morning. Um, Ari, thank you so much for your honest words. Uh, they were very meaningful and actually are quite reflective of uh, uh, the situation of today. Thank you very much. Um, Beth Osborne from the Marriott in downtown Toronto. Um, from the very moment we, we arrived here um, uh, in the beginning of January, we really didn't know, didn't know what to expect. Um, but as soon as we, we got out of the car and, and met the people from the Marriott, uh, the, the welcome that we have felt, the family atmosphere that they have created for us 
has been uh, something that we really didn't know uh, what to expect, but uh, uh, they have done so much in so many ways and it has made our stay in Toronto through this very difficult time um, a lot better than, than we could ever have imagined. So, Beth, thank you so much. I also like to thank uh, George and Khaled, who I've had the opportunity to meet because of the Oregon and Step by Step program. Um, and thank them so much for doing this uh, step by step in Sault Ste. Marie. Um, I it, we really, there isn't words to describe uh, how much we appreciate um, what you folks are doing for us. Um, you know, uh, when we first uh, were faced with this some 21 months ago, um, a lot of people ask how we're doing and uh, what I, what I have to say is that uh, um, I, I, could, I look at it and I could say, well, you know, we've been together uh, for 37 years and uh, we've had a wonderful life together and, and uh, a lot of people don't have the opportunity to have as long as a life as we have had. So I'm very fortunate and I feel good about that. On the other hand, uh, sometimes I can feel uh, angry that uh, uh, this has happened to such a wonderful wife and, uh, and uh, mother and grandmother. Uh, but the truth is when people ask how we're doing, we don't even know how we're doing because it's just a very difficult situation and you really don't know how you're doing until you're actually faced with that. And that's the case with so many things in life. So uh, uh, again, thank you guys so much for everything. But I just wanted to say a few things about, uh, I'm, a, I'm a, a statistical man, so bear with me for a few things. Uh, organ transplantation has evolved from uh, being an experimental thing uh, to the treatment of choice. Um, so there are many Ontarians that are awaiting the gift of life. Unfortunately, the supply uh, of solid organs for transplantation has not uh, met the demand and remains relatively unchanged over the past decade. The purpose of us being here, uh, the purpose of us doing the walk is not to raise money uh, for uh, the, the situation that we are personally involved in, but the sole purpose is to create awareness so that if people in the future uh, are in need of organs that, they're, that it becomes available more readily than they currently are. Uh, talk to your family. Um, even if you have a registered to consent your organs, the doctors will ask you uh, at the time if they can recover your organs. Um, you may find the topic of organ donation uncomfortable um, um, but try and make a firm decision about this. And keep it in mind that when someone passes, the family is often faced with a difficult situation uh, at the worst possible time. Uh, and this can be made easier uh, if the family is aware of the wishes uh, of an organ and tissue uh, donation. Uh, knowing that their loved one's uh, final wishes are carried out uh, can help to save many lives in the process and be a great source of, of solace. Um, there are a few things that uh, we all can do. Uh, we can discuss uh, with our family members uh, about our personal decisions. Uh, we could talk about it where, where we feel natural and comfortable in our own settings, when we're going for a walk, when we're going for a drive. Make it a topic of discussion. Um, have, the discuss have a discussion with people you know. Um, who would be called to your bedside if you were about to die? Uh, these are people who will be asked permission to go ahead with a donation. Talk to them about your decision and listen openly to people's, other people's concerns. Take the time to find out what each person in your family would want, as well as extended families and friends. And by talking it over with your family members, it will be a lot easier if the time should, should arrive where you need to make this kind of decision. Um, just a few interesting things. Um, to date, uh, there have been 742 transplants 
um, locally um, from liver, heart, kidney, uh, lung, uh, etc. Um, currently, there are 1,533 people on the waiting list. Um, so I think if we had a lot more people aware of this circumstance, we could eliminate some of these 1,533 people. To date, uh, for example, um, they have done 77 lung transplants. Um, in 2002, they did 56 lung transplants and have pro progressed not automatically up to the 102 that they did last year because some years they did 80, some years they did 99, other years they were back to 80 again. So they don't do transplants just for the sake of doing them. They have to be an exact match. There are certain criteria that, uh, that need to be met. Uh, one is organ size, of course, there's blood type, there's antibodies. And I understand that the decision for transplantation is a very complex one. And when the organs are harvested, the Trillium Foundation would make the organs available to the surgeons who would ultimately decide who is the best candidate for transplants. Um, I just wanted to say to the people in Sault Ste. Marie, um, Ontario or the Be a, Do Be a Donor program has had um, a goal of 300,000 um, people that wanted, uh, that, wanted, that they wanted to sign up for organ transplantation. Uh, since uh, April 1st till uh, June 30th, they have done 66,000 or 22% uh, of their goal. So to the people of Sault Ste. Marie, um, there are 70,137 people that carry a health card in Sault Ste. Marie currently. Out of those, 27,448 have signed their donor uh, or have uh, are registered donors, which represents uh, 39%. Great numbers. Uh, we are 24th out of 179 uh, in our community as far as uh, transplant or as far as uh, donation. And the purpose of us being here today is to increase that number as much as possible. Uh, there are three different ways to donate. Uh, you could download the Gift of Life consent form. Um, you could go to any person uh, at any Service Ontario Centre. Uh, of course, you can go to be a donor uh, CA and uh, and fill out the uh, consent form there. Uh, thank you very much for everyone here for the opportunity and uh, George and Ari and Beth and and uh, and Caleb. Caleb. Thank you so much and um, I hope things work out really good uh, tomorrow for Nancy and Sault Ste. Marie. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lou. Beth, the floor is yours. Thank you. My name is Beth Osborne and I am the General Manager of the Residence Inn by Marriott on Wellington Street in Toronto. I'm here today to share a somewhat unique perspective and personal perspective on the importance of our goal today. The Residence Inn Hotel has suites that are fully furnished like apartments, offering the comforts of, of a modern home which makes it an ideal place for extended stays. We have had several out of town guests stay with us who are on wait lists for organ transplants as they have to be within one hour of the hospital should they get the call. The associates at Residence Inn have seen firsthand how the gift of life works. The guests who have stayed with us in the past have primarily had, uh, have been waiting for lung donations. We've had guests check into the hotel barely able to walk from weakness and dependent on oxygen tanks for breathing. They have good days when they're up and about and bad days when they do not have enough energy to leave their room. Unfortunately, Nancy is in the latter case where she's having many more bad days where she's unable to leave her room. They usually have a family member with them who stays by their side and helps them do the everyday things that we take for granted, like brushing their teeth or bathing while visitors to these guests come and go. Inevitably, our team of associates becomes their extended family, and we all do what we can to make sure that they remain comfortable and well looked after. This might include celebrating their birthday or anniversary with these special guests, bringing them homemade goodies, or babysitting their dog when they go to the hospital for their appointments, just to name a few. 
When our guests get the call that an organ is available, we say our goodbyes and good lucks and prepare for their return after surgery. It's remarkable to see the transition of a person who is so sick that they have to ride a scooter to being able to dance, walk, and sometimes run around our hotel. And best of all, they get to go home. But it's the time that they spend waiting for that call that's the hardest for everybody. There's a window of opportunity that the surgery can take place for a recipient, and we are afraid that Nancy's window is becoming shorter and shorter. So, obviously what brought me here today is our guest Nancy, Lou's wife, who's waiting for double lung and liver transplant. Both must be from the same donor. Lou and Nancy have been staying with us since January, and when I go to work in the morning and look into their eyes and see the anguish that one more night has passed without the call, without a donation, it truly fills me with despair. I know that one more day will pass that will bring Nancy closer to the end of that window of opportunity, that she will have to endure one more day of trying to catch her breath, and one more day that she and her husband will be away from their home, from their children, and their grandchildren, and away from their friends in life as they knew it, waiting in anticipation for that gift of life. So the question that keeps popping in my head are, where are all the donors and why is it taking so long? I did a survey of my own associates at the hotel and out of 100 of them, only about 15 actually have driver's licenses. And many people have old health cards that never expire. So how would they know that there's a need for organ donors? How would they know how to register? How do people know about the lives that are lost waiting for transplants, the people who are being sent home because their window of opportunity has ended? How is the message getting out there? Hopefully, we're here to do that. I was here a month ago with a group of people pleading for people to register uh, their donor cards. Available data does not show how much change there has been in registered donors since then. And as well as I said, Nancy's health continues to deteriorate to the point where she can't even get out of bed. And I fear that soon she'll be moved to a hospital. Tomorrow we have a scheduled march with Caleb in Sault Ste. Marie. And all of Lou's Nan Lou and Nancy's family and friends and colleagues and co-workers will be joining uh, to get the word out in Sault Ste. Marie about the awareness and the importance of registering for organ donation. I can only hope that tomorrow's uh, event reaches more people, people outside of Sault Ste. Marie. Mm. It gets out to people all across Ontario so that more and more residents get registered. And I hope and I pray every single day that Nancy's life will be saved by one of those registered donors. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. Um, one should mention here something very important we sometimes neglect. I'll be very short. Corporate Canada deserves some credit. And I'm talking corporations that really devote time and efforts and uh, financial resources to assist. And I want to say thank you to the Marriott family of hotels, and I call on Corporate Canada to wake up mm -hmm. and instead of talking nonsense and taking on issues which have no humanitarian aspects, in order to support organ donations, they should make this as a priority rather than support, with all respect due, projects that have not immediate needs. Corporate Canada has the money, they have the moral stand to come out and say, okay, we are sending a message to our corporation, friends, to the community. Help. This is a time of help. Khaled, welcome to Canada. Thank you. And I hope your English is good enough now, because you know, when we had the, the Pope, the Polish Pope once came to England and the British lady at immigration asked him, why did you come to the UK? And he said, I came to Polish my English. She said, you may go home. Your English is Polish enough. So if you have problems to explain, don't worry. Tvadal. 
<laughs> Thank you. Thanks. <coughs> Hello, everyone. Today I finished the Ontario campaign. I carry the torch of life in memory of Betty Albright and for Elaine Campbell when she need a double lung transplant. For 110 days in 71 cities and towns, today I carry the torch for Nancy and tomorrow in her city of Sol Summary. Yeah. She need a double lungs life transplant and we pray that he will receive this torch without her, her thanks. Without him. Uh, just like Elaine Campbell, please help us do this by register at www.torchoflife.com or beadonor.ca. I would like to thank MPP, Frank Kells, and Mr. Mandel Green, and the step by step, and everybody here. Thank you. Thanks. And thank you. Thank you, Khaled. This is uh, great. And, uh, you know, you come from an area where Mary was born. Mary was born in the Holy Land. Tomorrow we are going to sue Saint Mary, another Saint Mary. I hope this will work. But if it's the power of gods or if it's power of people, we have to find a solution for Nancy and any call, any progress that can be made on this will save life. I want to thank, we are about to conclude this meeting. I want to thank all of you for coming. Um, as a former Israeli diplomat, I could talk forever. I will stop here. I am uh, busy now. I'm an ex-soldier, and I can tell you this. If we are not going to find a solution to live together, we will die together. So your act, your brother's act, donations of organs to Israeli kids has an impact on me. Today I am the vice chairman and the CEO of the Canadian Paris Center for Peace, which is headed, not today, but because he's the president of Israel, but headed by Shimon Peres, the Nobel Peace Prize laureate. And I'm sending you greetings to all of you and to Nancy for a speedy recovery. We pray that this will happen and the message has to go out. We will do everything possible. George, thank you very much. The torch was blessed by the Pope. I believe that uh, tomorrow in Sault Ste. Marie, we are going to carry it with dignity, pride, hope, and Khaled, you will be the one that will carry it. So it is now official. Good luck. Thank you so much and good afternoon.